Let's talk about the differences between these two tubes, a Salem sump tube and a small bore feeding tube. So the Salem sump tube can be inserted nasally or orally. It just depends on what's going on with your patient. Typically, if it's going to be orally, it's normally because the patient is intubated. This tube has a lot of versatility in its uses, so it could be hooked up to suction to suck out gastric contents or to decompress the belly if it's full of air, maybe like post-intubation. It could also be used to instill medications that could be anywhere from activated charcoal to just standard routine medications, and it can also be utilized to feed your patient with their tube feeds. So I want to go over this little port right here because I think it causes a little bit of confusion. So if you're going to do any of those things, like I said, suction, administer meds, or tube feeds, it has to be through this port. You would never do anything with this port except instill air. So the purpose of this port is really just to um, decrease the risk of gastric reflux. As long as it is held above the patient's stomach, it will prevent gastric contents from coming back out. In addition to that, um, you can see that it has this little valve right, right here. Um, and this is the proper positioning of how you want to use this little valve piece. Um, this valve right here allows air to go inward to normalize the pressure within the abdomen. That's going to be really important if your patient is hooked up to suction because what happens is if it's hooked up to suction and it gets stuck against the gastric lining, you can see how that could cause almost like a little hickey, like a little injury to that tissue. And so if this allows air to go back into it to kind of equalize that pressure to allow um, it to come off of that stomach lining to prevent injury. You would never use this port for anything except to hook a little syringe up, maybe pop it with air if you see some gastric contents in it, and that's really about it. Now, small bore feeding tubes are obviously smaller in diameter, um, but these can only be used for administering of medications and tube feeds. We would never hook this tube up to suction. It would be impossible to begin with because it just would collapse on itself and would not be effective at all. Another major difference with this is that this tube actually does have a wire in it. So depending on where you work, you may or may not be allowed to put these in. It just depends on your facilities policy and protocol, um, but this wire obviously has to be removed prior to usage, um, and this basically helps it uh, with placement. And sometimes they actually will have a weight at the end, this one is a weighted one, which also aids in placement to get it to where it needs to go. Sometimes they will want these inserted post pyloric or in the first portion of the duodenum, depending on what's going on with the patient. Old standard for both of these tubes when it comes to placement is going to be an abdominal x-ray, a KUB, a chest abdomen, whatever your facility actually calls it. There's also markings on these tubes that help you validate its um, location when you are giving handoff and getting reports. So this was just a very brief overview on the similarities and differences between these two. So let me know if you have questions by commenting below and don't forget to follow along.